one year ago. A story that embraced a nation, a team that made a run for the state championship and collected a state district trophy. This team is Fenville, and in 2011, a key player of this special team collapsed on the court after making the game-winning shot. As the team takes the court each week, the memory is still fresh of a player who made a difference to his team and had an impact even after his tragic death. It brought Fenville closer together. I mean, like, we were already close once he was here, but once he passed, it just brought us closer. Like, if we ever needed anything, if we needed something to say, we could just say it to the team or to our coach. You know, when, when they stepped on the floor, when they decided that they wanted to play in the district, you know, I think even though we didn't talk about it, there was an, a, a quiet or a silent understanding of we want to go represent what Wes was and how he competed. And, um, you know, a lot of times before those three games, we just talked about competing uh, because that's such a, a great thing, such a life lesson. Uh, we need to step on the floor and compete whether it was a situation we were in or in just a regular uh, season type of game. Wes was just really an outstanding young man, and um, he's greatly missed. And uh, we know what a uh, magnet he was for the attention of uh, kids and uh, the community as a whole, how much they respected him, how much they held him in high regard. And so not only for his athletic prowess on the field, but uh, just for the kind of person he is, uh, that's where uh, we really think he's an outstanding addition to the Hall of Fame. The Fenville Hall of Fame honoring such athletes as Richie Jordan, five foot seven and a half inches tall and 160 pounds, a 1965 grad of Fenville High School, an All-State football halfback, and a basketball star averaging 44.4 points per game, an all-time scoring leader with 2,210 points, and Sam Moorhead a Fenville coach and teacher for 40 years who received the honor of the gymnasium being named after him in 2010. And tonight, number 35, Wes Leonard will be part of the Great Hall. In regard to this year, um, the decision was made that uh, given the events of the last uh, year, that uh, it was pretty obvious who um, our Hall of Fame inductee for this year should be. And uh, so that was when the decision was made to uh, induct Wes. Not doing it for something to remember him by, because um, every day we, we remember him. Um, so I think I, my idea in my head would be that's how the players will respond to that, is uh, it's something that he would have deserved. Um, but it's not something that will, you know, we need to, to look at to remember him because we've got such other uh, great memories. You know, it's not what you wanted. It's not what you wanted. You wanted him to say, yeah, I was a four-year varsity player at MSU on their, you know, on their football team and come back and, you know, be a big wig and all that and, um, you know, let him have his time, whether he played there or wherever. But, um, you know, it's it, it's hard. It, it's hard. It, it'll be um, It'll be super bittersweet. Wes Leonard's impact on this team and this community will be remembered forever. Very big impact brought us closer, uh, more like a family now, and yeah, just a big impact in, in the community. I think every morning, sometime throughout the day, when we go to sleep at night, uh, we think about Wes. And, and, uh, so to have to do something special, for us we don't have to, because. We've got something special in our hearts, I think, that we remember and we think of uh, every single day, whether it's a game day or not a game day, that uh, we think about them.